are doing Lana a huge favor. Welcome to the Mac Dressing Podcast, episode 297, and it must also be the last stop before promo series week. This is your captain speaking along with the here and now Mike Larkin, Travis Walker Anderson, and El Jefe Moses Marquez. This is the promo series 5 go home show. The, the pro- on. Well, actually, you know what? Promo series is the birthplace of two things the promo championship yes. and Mike Larkin. Yes, I didn't mean to cut you off on that, but yes, I was about to say hello. Four <laughs> years ago, Dazzy Dangerously, I'm having an anniversary, and I can't wait because what a better way to celebrate it than going against L, former professional wrestler, and my friend, Miss Brittany Savage. What a way to celebrate four years, Dazzy. Yes, and I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but I've seen a certain dance part of Mike's promo, and it is killer. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of dancing in that. It's half pop culture. It's half seriousness. <laughs> I aim to entertain, and I aim to please Mr. Dazzy Dangerously. As, as long as he's not dancing to, uh, uh, what was it, Miley Cyrus and, and yelling spank it, then I'm all no, about it. No, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> no. It's wrecking ball. No, it's not. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were on the same wavelength for that one. And fucking oh. hell, I just pictured him like in his room on a damn fucking <laughs> bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> Because only Mike no. would be the guy that actually rents a bulldozer. Yes. I, I would, that, actually, that sounds like a good idea. Might wear a Speedo, you know? Hey, man, we can make it work. <laughs> make it happen. Hey, hey there, uh, there's your chance to wear the dress. It's, hey, it's yeah. Spray tan, right? <laughs> Dresses, Speedos, boats, and hoes. Hell yeah, man. We can do the damn thing up there, you know? Uh, all but right. You know what we can do? You know what we can do? Before we even get to this, man, I just want to say Bob Saget is my new hero. Bob yeah, yeah. Edward Fuck Austin Aries. Saget. He writes, everybody out there safely celebrating, please wear a mask. We don't need more COVID super spreading, and you guys don't want to follow the bad examples we are all still witnessing this year. This COVID shit's real. And then Austin Aries, who's now going by his real name on Twitter, Daniel Austin Haley, writes, you get paid for this ad? The 99.6% survival rate's real, too. Another sad celebrity shell pushing the spear agenda. Then Saget absolutely owned his ass. Let's say, and dear Daniel, not dear Stan, but dear Daniel, I have a few friends who almost died from COVID and they are middle aged and we're healthy. I find fact and anti science deniers incredibly sad, but I can still respect your opinion and open to discuss unless you don't talk to celebrity shills. Fuck yourself, Austin Aries, you vegan son of a bitch. <coughs> well, that's one way, buddy. Yeah. So, yes. on that bombshell, we, obviously, we got a lot to discuss this week as we come out of full gear and head into turning points. But first. Let's take a trip back to Friday night. It's time to recap the smack. Six-time main roster women's champion Sasha Banks finally retained a singles championship for the first time ever against Bayley before being attacked by the returning Carmella. Jey Uso then finds falling in line harder than he thought as Roman is not happy to find out he's doing an interview without his permission. Following an attack backstage interference from Seth Rollins and Dominic and an appearance from Aaliyah and Murphy, Baron Corbin defeated Rey Mysterio to take a spot on Team Blue for Survivor Series. In a pretty short triple threat match, short-haired Ruby Riot won a spot on the women's team against Natalya and Zelina Vega. Seth Rollins later won his place on the men's Survivor Series team by defeating Otis and Murphy, looking at ringside. 
And in the main event, Jey Uso had a little assistance from Roman Reigns, distraction to win against Seth Ro uh, against Kevin Owens, who is his Survivor Series teammate, and that was SmackDown. I gotta say, when you said short-haired Ruby Riot, I'm like, nah, nah, that's Heidi Lovelace, man, because she used to have a lot of short hair. Yeah, yeah, of course, but I mean, we're so used to seeing Ruby Riot as Ruby Riot, it was like, well, wait a minute, what the fuck? No, but hey, <laughs> she's on the team. She's on the team, and good for her. They got her and Bianca Belair, that's awesome. Yes, because SmackDown have to earn their spots, and Raw just get given them. Oh, you know I gotta do it, man. All right, hold on. So I'm watching Monday Night Raw. And then we get to the whole thing with Lana, Nia Jax, and everybody. <laughs> then I friggin' get to the part. And I, you know what it is? I can almost see it like like a premonition, if you will. Because here goes Nia. She's got Mandy Rose. I'm watching the spot. It's wonky as hell. And I'm like, oh, no. And then they get to the spot where they cut to Mandy Rose holding her arm. And I'm like, she goddamn did it again. Yep. Which I, I actually missed until uh, it was pointed out. Again, through social media. Um, yeah. Fucking, she was doing so well. Yes. Yeah. It's been a good few months since uh, Naya injured somebody. Yeah, Kyrie, uh, and now she's injuring Mandy Rose. But at least she puts Lana through a table. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get into Raw because we kicked off with Randy Orton interrupting The Miz. And his nauseating sidekick, Johnny Rentonin. Um I mean, Orton, Orton came out like he's been snorting something backstage. He was... <laughs> he was going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he was a B-line on that C-line, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> he told Johnny... He told John Morrison, yo, when you were still working on the minor leagues, and I'm like, oh, oh shit. Randy can't help himself but take a shot at any other company besides the WWE. Oh, I mean, I mean, yeah. At the time, Impact was minor league, but you know, he also worked in Lucha. Yes, minor league. Um, but McIntyre tries to attack, and Orton hits an RKO because, of course, this never-ending feud is still going. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, we are getting a very fresh match next week as Randy Orton defends the WWE Championship against Drew McIntyre. This is now, why I don't watch Raw when it's live. Can I just say that the only reason I'm looking forward to it is because of the Fiend interference, but do you think we're finally going to have McIntyre win it back and then instead of getting Orton and Reigns heel versus heel, we get McIntyre and Roman? Ah, uh, yeah, because Survivor Series. Uh, this is why I hate champion versus champion because you can't continue feuds like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, so technically, is the Fiend and Randy Orton their feud in which the direction they're going? Does it need the title? No. In all honesty, I don't care who faces Roman. I don't care who wins the match next week. I just want this feud to end. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing Orton and Drew McIntyre. But for me, I think the matchup there is McIntyre and Reigns is better because they've been kind of planting the seeds of like, oh, and wherever the fiend is, here's Drew McIntyre with a claymore. I'm going to stand up for professional wrestling. Randy, I'm begging. Make the tag. Come in this ring, Randy. I fucking bloody tell you. I didn't say fucking, but I bloody tell you to get the That's ring. That's how you away. know you're mad. Yeah. yeah. Fucking. fucking and bloody at the same time. Fucking, fucking bloody. bloody. There, uh, fucking bloody. There's also the thing, though, that if McIntyre wins, then what the hell was the point putting the belt on Orton for, what, three weeks? Because he's a 14-time champion. He's getting close. He's getting closer and closer. He's like Neo. Come closer to get yeah. the title, man. But it's too late now. Cena's already tired. It should have been Orton to begin with. Should have been May. Ain't that right, Moses? Damn right. All right. It's yeah. gonna well, be May. We'll, uh, we'll come back to this feud for the end of the night on Raw. But a triple threat match followed that. And I, I expected Matt Riddle. So to, uh, to eat the pin, but surprisingly, he pinned Elias, much to the dismay of Sheamus backstage, and Matt Riddle is now on Team Raw for Survivor Series. Did God. you see that where he's like, he impressed Vince McMahon, and I'm like, but you made him change his name to Riddle. No, he's still Matt Riddle to me. My uh, whole everything. thing is, is like, what more do you need to be impressed with this fucking guy? Like, what, what does it take? 
all you fucking wanted was the Von Erichs, you have a modern, better, faster Von Erich. Mm. What the fuck? Well, I mean, he certainly made up for it this past week because he won two matches on the same night because later on, uh, it was Keith Lee and Matt Riddle versus Sheamus and Braun Strowman with AJ as a referee. Um, well, before that, AJ tried to rally the team for Survivor Series while Matt Riddle picks code names for everybody. So, AJ was the skipper. Uh, Strowman was Mongoose. There you go. I was supposed to say who's Mongoose. <laughs> Keith was Broly. Uh, and Sheamus was Fireface. And then it was just a great exchange with Sheamus. Went, well, what's your name? Dopey. How did you know, bro? <laughs> Do you want to nah, know Mongoose why is the best. Was Fireface? Do you want to know why Seamus was Fireface? Because he's ginger. He's no. You, you're forgetting. Oh, the because other he reason. gets red when he's mad. Yeah. No, that's not the what? reason. Y'all are really just gonna like just go over this right now. All right, I'm gonna tell well, you. Those are the reasons because... Matt, Matt Riddle gave. Well, because we're TV PG and we can't say fire. <laughs> oh, very. Did true. we or did we not say queer like twice on like last like two weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> he did, but I'm just saying on TV PG on Raw. I mean, when Christy Hemi had the fire crash guillotine leg drop as her finisher, TNA had no problem calling it the fire crash. And also Lindsay Lohan, hello. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh! oh. Um, Alright, so in this... Oh, no, nah, we've skipped ahead to like halfway through the show, but in this tag match, AJ accidentally gets kicked by uh, Matt Riddle and then squashed in between Keith Lee and Strowman, which prompts Jordan to enter the ring. <laughs> Uh, but then we cut to a break. And as we come back from the break, normal service has resumed. And uh, Seamus broke kick Strowman uh, off the apron after tagging himself in and then gets rolled up by Matt Riddle. So Matt Riddle gets two wins in one night. Bruh. I don't know what the hell the last couple of weeks were about, but, you know, Vince seems to have come to his senses when it comes to Matt Riddle. Uh, so earlier on in the night, let's go back a little bit. Drew Gulak tries to join the Hurt Business. Uh, but gets rejected and then beat down for wearing a clip-on tie. For shame. For shame, Drew. For shame. Can you not tie a tie, buddy? Well, you know, I'm a 24-7 champion. i got to think on my feet. Well, you know what's interesting about clip-ons? They clip on? Yeah, they clip on. (laughs) No. Well, if you look at Joan Osborne, for God's sake, you know, when she was singing What If God Is One Of Us, everybody thought she had a nose ring, but it was just, you know, like a clip-on too. So, I mean, if he wants to do, like, a Joan Osborne, but with a clip-on tie, man, hey, God, I, God bless I, him. I, I got some uh, clip-on nose rings because I dressed as Slash one year for Halloween. You the man. Yeah, you're right, <laughs> uh, Drew Gulak, obviously, like we said, got beat down. Uh, he actually falls before he's punched, but, you know, he still got beat down. <laughs> don't know if anybody caught that. Uh, and then as he's looking up at the light, uh, Truth just comes out of nowhere and re- reclaims his title. So far, he reclaimed his title. That's just the beginning of his night. Shayna then murders Lana. Absolutely <laughs> molly whops her. Molly whop on that bitch. But unfortunately, as Naya goes to put Lana through a table, uh, Lana is saved by the Gucci girls. <laughs> the Gucci girls. That, that, yep, that, that's the name and I'm sticking to it. And I'm sticking to Dana it. Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose are the Gucci girls. <sighs> um. So, like, oh, backstage, Nikki tried to confront Alexa again and kind of gave her an ultimatum, you know, me or him. And obviously, she chose a fiend, and that was the end of that. We didn't see anything else for the rest of the night. Ooh, um, I'm still trying to get over the Gucci girls. So, in regards to <laughs> in regards to Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss, I'll be honest with you, I can't wait to see them get there. And that whole thing has me intrigued, and I can't wait. Well, the weird, the strange thing is, obviously, there was a point where Nikki Cross was crazy, and she would have made a great sister Abigail, but now, you know, the roles are kind of reversed. Now, how funny would it be, because she did tease the fact that she may invite her to the Firefly Funhouse, and then we get the old Nikki Cross of just going ape shit like she was on Saturday and just by herself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Fiend will have, like, like this Dracula thing going on where he's got all these crazy brides. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It, it would be fun. Shotsy. And Shotzi. <laughs> yeah, add Shotzi and then you got the three. There you go. That would That's be fucking what... awesome. Definitely. Exactly. Um, and as fun as it sounds, I do 
really kind of like the uh, the whole Joker Harley thing they got going on. Um, now a little bit of a random thing for the evening. Titus O'Neil challenges Lashley. <laughs> <laughs> they they also pointed out that Lashley hasn't defended a title since Clash of Champions because they completely forgot about Hell in a Cell. Sorry, Heck in a Cell. Yeah, we're gonna forget Slapjack never happened. Well, I wish we could. I mean, it was three minutes of nothing. Yep. Um, but Titus, kind of, he sunk in some stiff right hands, but you know, he still tapped out very quickly to the uh, the hurt lock. First and foremost, I had an issue with this. You know what the issue was? That they don't call it the Bobby Lock. The Bobby Lock. No. The Bobby Lock. No. What happened was they were talking about, oh, Titus O'Neil, you want to get a shot for the first time? I'm like, he fought Rusev in 2016, I believe it was, for the United States Championship at Battleground. Anything Rusev has been thrown out. Like like we just said, Mike, they couldn't even remember Hell in a Cell last month. Oh, what a bunch (laughs) of morons. The continuity uh... in history. Yeah, well, Russo. Well, speaking of continuity, the great line came from MVP sit, uh, telling Titus the match is taking place in the ring, not under the ring. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, um, so we, we mentioned that the Gucci girls saving Lana earlier on, but she did finally eat another table from Nia after uh, Asuka defeats Nia by DQ after Shayna attacks. Don't know what the hell to do with Asuka. She just kind of seems to be there at the minute. Well, as of right now, she's a part of that champion versus champion, too, and now we're going to get Sasha Banks well, again. For the- yeah, I mean, obviously she's uh, doing champion versus champion, but as as far as anything on Raw goes, Asuka's just doing nothing. Here's the thing. What they could possibly be building her for, because we saw the promo with Retribution, like, I'd love to see her and Mia Yim go at it, but I'm sick and tired of Retribution. Yeah. Um, well, the next match was a seven-way for the 24-7, 7-11 Whatever. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, 95 championship. Um, and, you know, we should have seen it coming, really, but <clears throat> the title changed hands seven times in the match. Like, all seven people were champion at one point before Truth even finally made a getaway. Even Tucky, Tucky, Tucky. Tucky, Tucky. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tucky. he's uh, finally been reduced to 24-7 champion. God. Uh, and well, Eric, was... Eric as well. Eric... Got got the title for a little bit. Just you know what's interesting about that? The fact that he's going by his old last name. Like he remember when he was in uh heavy machinery, they wouldn't even call yeah. it Tucker not he was just Tucker. Now he's back to having a last name. Uh yeah, I mean Otis is still Otis and they're not gonna bring back uh Dokovic. Yeah, no Dozovic, just Otis. <clears throat> even though they still call him the Dozer. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on to the main event of Raw. Wait a minute. Yes. Stop Ali and Ricochet. Oh, that's right. You know why I skipped over that match? Why'd you skip over it? Because I don't give a shit. Because it's Mustafa Yeah, Ali. buddy! I, I don't care about Retribution already. Ricochet's just doing... He, he just He's getting on my tits, to be perfectly honest. Um, And you, I gave that less of a shit about this match. I don't even know who won. Okay, so I fell asleep at the finish of this match. I had See? to my back. So, <laughs> well, you know what it was? It was a good match. It was a good back and forth match, but you'd make me not care because of Retribution. So yeah. Mustafa Ali has a new finisher, and it's the Koji Clutch. So Ricochet passed out. Well, so Ricochet did what everybody else did. Yes, he went to sleep. Uh, and every time Ali... Uh, cuts a promo on Retribution backstage. It makes me care even less. We will shut you down. It's it's supposed to make the group look better every time he speaks, but I don't care. Retribution's don't been dead from the beginning. And then you dr- randomly drop Mercedes Martinez. Well, in a way, I'm happy good for her, though. Well, good she for her, go yeah, back. but she still hasn't turned up on NXT or anything They're since leaving. figuring out a way to write her back in. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, now on to the main events. Orton finds out he's defending against Drew next week, and he ain't happy about it. Neither are we, because, you know, 
enough's enough. Uh, yeah, it's time. So, yeah, six-man tag main event. Orton refuses to tag in for the entire match. As McIntyre and New Day defeat Orton, Miz, and Morrison. Whoa. Yeah, that that was your main event of Raw. It, it was like it got up to Lana going through a table and then it just got stupid and stupid and don't care and don't care, don't care. Uh, so what was it, table number eight this week or seven? Eight. Eight, eight. eight. nice. <laughs> oh, Lana. <laughs> of course, next week we will be predicting Survivor Series, so hopefully at least some of this leads somewhere. Now, before we get into Impact, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, like and share. And whatever podcast platform you may be listening to, don't forget to follow or subscribe right now and take it to the max every single week. Impact in three, two, one. Well, now what we say we're talking Impact, but it's turning point predictions this week. There are nine matches for the event this Saturday uh, exclusively to Impact+. Plus. So let's kick it off with, uh, well, as we saw this week, Rohit Raju is still X Division Champion defeating TJP, and TJP can not challenge for the title now for as long as Rohit is still champion. Uh, so he's bringing back the uh, defeat Rohit challenge at turning point. So I guess it's Rohit or TBA. I'm going to go with Rohit to retain again. TBA. Give me somebody good. Give me some maybe some Jordan Grace. Maybe give me some uh, give me some uh, give me some Ken. Give me some Ken Shammy Rock. I, I I keep thinking somebody's gonna beat Rohit, but he has held this title so much longer than I thought he would because he keeps coming up with creative ways to cheat. So I I just can't see. I'm I'm guessing this title's gonna go on for quite a while. He's a clever guy. How long has he had the title? He won it from Chris Bay. Uh, it wasn't like anniversary, was it? It was before anniversary. Yeah, it was. It was during the summer. It was yeah, before anniversary though. Yeah, he beat Chris Bay, and um, I believe TJP was also in that triple third as well. Yeah, because he was supposed to be in there to uh, back up Chris Bay, and ended up stabbing him in the back. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna go. T- TBA. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Mike? I love that, man. So I got to go Earl Heat Raju. The Daisy Hitman, man. Come on, you got to go with the Daisy Hitman. But here's what I'm thinking about his opponent. Since TJP can't challenge anymore, how about he comes back as Manic or Suicide? Come alive. That would be great if he comes out as Manic. Or, oh yeah, if he does steal Suicide's costume. I mean, because, he was Suicide. Uh, it worked for Austin Aries. Oh, right. boy. Yes. All right. So who are you go- going with, Mike? Are you going with Rohit or Suicide? Quotation marks. Su- or as the Pope used to call him, Suicide. No, I'm going to go with Rohit Raju to retain the Daisy Hitman, man. The Daisy Hitman. All right. Um, next match, tag team. Triple XL, even though they're almost double XL because Larry D's dropping some pounds. Uh, take on Chris Saban and James Storm. Kind of a foregone conclusion. It's got to be Saban and Storm. Yeah, absolutely. Hands down, no questions asked. <laughs> I love uh, Storm trying to teach Saban how to drink beer this week. <laughs> that was funny as hell. <laughs> He's like, I'll even buy you some beer. Well, I don't need you to buy me no beer, but I'll team with you. Well, how many of these have you drank? What, like 10? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the way Saban was drinking that beer is like how I drink beer. I, I cannot <laughs> freaking do it. It sucks. I hate beer. How <laughs> the hell you hate beer? You just haven't man. found the right one. Uh, that's exactly I, what no, it is. It's not that. I just prefer my vodka. Well, okay. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> um, Moses. Uh, I I was too busy just tripping on the. Well, it's got to be James Storm and them. 
I mean, because James Jordan is just coming back. He's just now coming back, right? Yeah, his yeah, first match back his was first match. the uh, the gauntlet. Well, I mean, yeah, he's got to he's got to win. There's no point in beating him now. That would just fucking ruin everything. Yeah. Plus, they're both. Plus, one he's half. teaching the dude how to drink. Come on, now. What does he? <laughs> and they're both one half of the two of the most successful tag teams in Impact history. Well, there you go, uh, Mike. Gotta go, Saban. Sorry about your damn luck, Chris Saban and James Stone. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll come to you first, Mike, for this one because it's Brian Myers versus Swoggle. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna rant a little here. First of all, I love Brian Myers, and you know I love Brian Myers. Prince of fucking Queens is what he is. So <laughs> Brian Queens Myers, the the Prince of fucking Queens. The only reason why Swoggle is fucking here is because of Brian Myers and the fact that they're best friends. And I hate the fact that Swoggle is here. I don't want to see Swoggle. I just want to see Brian Myers molly wop on that son bitch. So I'm going to go with the Prince of Effin' Queens, Kurt Effin' Hawkins, one half of Brian Myers and Brett Matthews coming out to BSB. It's got to be you at the NYWC Sportatorium. I am talking about Brian Effin' Myers. Brian Myers for the win. Let's go. Yeah. Well, you could have just simply just said Brian Myers. You know, I, mean, I don't know about all that extra stuff. Well, I hate it, and let's go Brian yeah. Myers. You don't really need to justify Brian Myers picking Brian Myers to beat Swaggle. It's, I mean, no, no disrespect. It's Swaggle, fucking but... Swaggle. I don't know what the hell this guy's doing around here. Uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase, and is that a full house for Brian Myers? Hell no. Oh, okay. hell no. Oh, come on. Like I am short going to and, and swoggle and all damn day. Swoggle all motherfucking day. I'm here to get motherfucking paid. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> shaking my head in disappointment. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to swoggle, it hits a soft spot, okay? Did you hey, used to be a midget? I, I... Did you used to <laughs> see a <laughs> fuck up? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! No. Well, when I was a little boy. The first, yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> like, the the first wrestling show I ever went to, it was a Monday Night Raw in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I, I wanted to be a dumbass. I wanted to dress up. I wanted to go oh, try to get on TV, you know. So I dress up as a freaking leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I did get on TV. But it Leaving the show, who uh, my uncle, he was the one that took me. He had me, he uh, he saw some limo who pulling out the back and was like, hey, I bet there's a wrestler in there. I was like, all right, well, let's find out. So I jumped in the middle of the street and started dancing in front of the limo. Uh, the window rolls down and it was Randy Orton. He was oh. like, kid, that was the funniest shit I've seen all day. And then it handed me a shirt. <laughs> Okay. But also, t- two years ago, I go to Shelby, North Carolina, and I see one of the funniest damn matches I've ever seen in person, and it involved Swaggle. I got to meet him. I got his autograph. I got a picture with him, and I fucking love the dude. And also, fuck Brian Myers. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> that, that story definitely warrants uh, choosing Swaggle. <laughs> Yeah, man. I always have a reason when I do something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, a, there's always a chance of outside interference. Or he's just going to end up biting his ass until he taps out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so pretty uh, much what he's saying is he's going to challenge his inner Marv Albert, but instead of biting on the back, he'll bite on the ass. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Mini-Me did it, too. That he did. Mini-Me. I shall call him Mini-Me. Um, okay. Next one's kind of random. I don't know why it's happening. They didn't even really refer to it on this week's Impact, but Davari versus Eddie Edwards. Oh, come on. Eddie Edwards. Yeah, gotta be. Uh... Um, Travis Davari? Uh, <laughs> nah, is there no story about the Barry? Nah, <laughs> he's like, uh, nah. 
No, I got to go with Eddie. Nah, Moses. Got to be Eddie. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I'm so glad that when they brought Sean back to do this stuff, and I think he's a great wrestler. I like Sean Devari. Yeah. But the fact that they didn't bring him back as Sheik Abdul-Bashir made me happy. <laughs> Horrible gimmick. Horrible. But, yeah, seriously, why is this match happening? I have no idea. I still don't have any idea why this match is happening. Whatever, okay. Uh, they do realize this is a... Well, not pay per view because well, it's kind of a pay per view because it's on a subscription service. But hey, let me tell you something, man. When you look at the rich history of Turning Point, nothing will ever be prime time. He'll accept and skip. Nope. Walk in the cage is iconic. Yep. Um. All right, Moose is taking on Willie Mack, and there's no mention Moose. of the TNA World Title Belt replica prop. Uh, it's just mm. a singles match. But coming off, Moose. yeah, coming off that win against EC3 and EC3 riding off into the sunset already, got to go Moose. Yeah, I mean, Moose. I, I like Willie Mac, but Moose is obviously on a rampage. Fucking Moose. Mike, I would say the UK reference because Willie Mac, because Return of the Mac, Mark Morrison. But you know, as much as I love that song. And I have to quote Chucky Finster on this from the Rugrats. What about the Moose? So I'm going to say Moose wins. <laughs> what about that? I can't do Chucky's voice. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason you I can't do what? Chucky's voice is because it's actually a woman. It is. Christina Kavanaugh. Got to rest herself. All right. So I remember that we basically everybody did complete shit. The last time we predicted impact? Yes, we all got two so, out of seven. We yeah. Do complete so shit again, let, but... let me go Willie Mac. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, you know why he's going Willie Mac? Because he also likes the name Chocolate Thunder. So he's going to go with the Chocolate hey. Thunder. Ain't no sexual chocolate, but we'll take the Thunder. Chocolate Thunder! Easy white chocolate. I would have won't shoot a milk. Whoa. Now, uh, poor Jordan Grace kind of got pushed aside last week uh, between Madison and Sunil Dashwood, and it didn't go their way this week uh, against Havoc and Nevaeh, so finally Tennille goes crawling back to Jordan Grace, and they're going to team up against Rosemary and Taya Valkyrie at turning point. Now, wait, what? Say that again? <laughs> Tennille Dashwood and Jordan Grace will be teaming up against no. Rosemary and Ty Valkyrie. No. Tennille no. went up uh, backstage to Madison, didn't she? No, she went up backstage to Jordan. It was last week on Locker Room Talk that she asked Madison to be a partner. I could have sworn that uh, this this week's episode of Impact Backstage, Tennille went up and asked her to be her partner. And then she was like, going to let her prove it this weekend. Yeah, that was Jordan Grace. I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the thing, yeah. Um, Jordan Grace said, she, well, for, I mean, Caleb was going to ask, Caleb with a K was going to ask her. And then Jordan was like, she has to ask me herself. And Tanil was like, will you be my partner? Sorry, say it again. Will you be my partner? She's like, well, we'll see how you get along on Saturday against Rosemary and Sire. So, yeah, this is a this is a trial run before they officially team up in the tournament. That's what I get for doing uh, two screens, <laughs> watching this and NXT. <laughs> yeah, the, she Tanil actually actually did team with Madison on the in the opening match actually on Impact and yeah, yeah they lost to Havoc yeah. and Nevaeh. So, uh, the fact that Jordan Grace is probably going to do most of the work, and also the fact that Rosemary and Ty are probably going to be a little bit distracted with the whole Who Shot Bravo thing going on, I'm going to go Jordan Grace and Tanil. You know me, I'm all about me as Jordan Grayson. Of course. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
hey, by the way, if I didn't say it already, congrats to Jonathan Gresham on winning the uh, ROH Peer Championship. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Mike, you're, you're a Bathwater fan as well. You going with Jordan Grace? Yeah, the boy. Well, first and foremost, I would just like to say, yeah, I'm going to go with Bathwater City. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm just going to go opposite of y'all. Okay. <laughs> and when, 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 when Trav gets them all right, it's hilarious. Yeah, first of all, if there's anyone to have bias in this match, is you, Mr. Travis Anderson. Caleb with a K, that's my boy, the revolt. You're not just going to go with your boy. I know, I know. I mean, I love Jordan Grace, and I love Caleb with a K, but <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of experimenting with these predictions this go around. <laughs> I go off, like everybody goes the same way. All right, I'm going to go the opposite to see if I can keep this title again. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we, we also have to remember it's not really a proper pay-per-view. It's kind of, it's more like a, a network special. That's true. Well, um, I'm still going to experiment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to oh, oh, no DQ match for the Impact Knockouts Championship. Sue Young and Deanna Perazzo, the second rematch. Sue Young. Young. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's got to be a full house for Sue Young. Yeah, I'm going to go Sue Young. And also what I'm thinking, too, is as I'm pondering my thought here, I'm thinking Deanna Perrazzo and Kimberly are going to be in the Knockouts Tag Team Tournament. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Well, didn't uh, Kimber just, like, get killed? <laughs> this is true. Okay, never mind. <laughs> man, oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, man, it all blends together with wrestling. You over there. Which week am I watching professional wrestling over here? Who am I here again? What day is it? What week is it? I don't know who I am. <laughs> well, Scotty's down. Okay. Um. Now this, we all did. We all said the Good Brothers last time, and we all got it wrong. Cause well, no, none of us said the North, but we all got it wrong in the four way. It's got to be the Good yeah. Brothers this time against the North. It has to be. It's for the tag titles, right? Yeah. Watch it not be. And there's a new uh, Talking Shop Mania coming around, too. It'd be coming around. The thing I'm just So if we all say the Good the Brothers, brothers Travis The Good Brothers North. have been. No, I'm not. Because the Good <laughs> if we all say the Good I, Brothers and they lose, we jinx them. Like, this one's getting me pissed because like they have been main in the show e- almost each week. They got commercial after commercial for their shows that they do. Like they are plugging the living shit out of these guys. Why are the titles not on them? Yeah. Hey, didn't they get the belts after the whole hashtag beat up John Cena run? Yes. In WWE. So yeah, they may just say, "Ah, fuck it, they'll be fine without them." That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, but again, there's the same thing again. If Good Brothers win, what was the point putting the titles on the North when Good Brothers could have won the titles two weeks ago? I think, uh, I think they just wanted to swerve us at Bound for Glory. Because it's the North. Uh, give me the North. You going to North? Yeah, I, okay. I, I love me the Good Brothers, but some tells me that they're going to have to win it on like a real big show. Yeah. Uh, Mike? I am going to go with all ego Ethan Page and the walking weapon Josh Alexander. The North to retain, and they also do have a pay-per-view coming in January. They got Hard to Kill, so maybe they'll win it at Hard to Kill. Yeah, well, I mean, the perfect go. time would have been their biggest pay-per-view of the year, Bound for Glory. I agree, but, man, they got Facts. Jackson coming up. They got January, and it's Hard to Kill. You can't kill the Good Brothers, even how many times that they drink, and they be talking shot, brother. So, yeah, but I still got to go with the North on this one. All ego, walking weapon, they're threatened. Woo! Yeah, I remember last year when we when we said impact really is hard to kill. Yes, we <laughs> did. Hey, man. What they say about all they do is drinking into beers. I don't mean to make this real quick. Have any of you guys ever heard their um, their episode of uh, that they did with the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast? No. Yes. Which it, one? 
the the uh, well, it was pretty much just like a two part one when they just hung out and drunk drank beer all night. Okay, I know they did one with Erica where they were talking and they were all getting drunk and buzzed, and then there was a hotel person coming in bringing the bellhop. Every they're all getting drinks. There was they they did a lot of those. There was one with AJ Styles. Well, with Enzo Amore, they did a lot of those. No, I mean, this one was like on Steve Austin's. They went over to Steve Austin's house. He was like, "Oh yeah, like I bought like a thirty. He's like, I bought like a twenty-four pack, and then these guys already brought a thirty-six pack already open, and it was like, oh, it's gonna be one of those nights." So Moses, they went on down to thirty-six T Gimmick Street. What? Oh God, I love that. And now he freaking moved. Now there's no more such thing as three three sixteen Gimmick Street no more. I know, right? <laughs> Bastard. Damn fucking Roberts. World class podcast. So, <laughs> so when I real find quick, that episode, I'm gonna show it to you guys. Before we move on to the next match, uh, what do y'all think the chances are of a partnership between Impact and AEW? They seem to seen. have like this open network now with New Japan and Ring of Honor. Yeah, I think because, Tony Khan uh, is smart enough to listen to any and all offers. Yes. We have to do think of but, that one thing that Don Callis is like Kenny Omega's best friend outside of... <laughs> Kota Ibushi. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, they did. They just, they plugged full gear this week on Impact. Oh, we'll see. There you go. This is what happens when you don't watch the show. You just watch the highlights. <laughs> yeah, they were uh, promoting uh, Chris Bay and uh, the Super junior. J. Yeah, Super J. Oh, so yeah, yeah Super J Cup. Yeah, they were promoting that and uh, plug Kenny Omega and uh, uh, Full Gear. Isn't one of them working in the New Japan Strong as well? Yeah, I think TJP. Yeah, TJP. Yeah. Well, see, there you go. Yeah, the thing. I think it would be. I think it would be smart for legit. AEW, Impact, and New Japan to decide, and maybe even throw MLW or Ring of Honor in there. Just do this whole giant circuit where every year their guys are going through these four platforms. That way, no matter what you're doing, any other night you're watching wrestling that's not a Monday or a Friday, you're catching guys that you actually want to see on national television because you'll get you'll get the guys on Impact on Tuesdays. They'll turn around and be on uh, AEW on Wednesdays, and then you know, they're also making big news in Japan, but that's the downside. Not a lot of guys can go to Japan, so they got to keep it with the strong. Yeah, the, the problem with Vince is like any promoter would be, hey, hey Vince, you want you want to work together? And he's like, nope, sell him. Nah, 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 nah. Let me let me buy him. I'll all, buy all, all wrestlers should work for me. Oh yeah, what's this independent crown tactic bullshit? Oh, by the way, do they have Twitch? Let Who's me, got to buy their Twitch too? Has, I want to. I want to know when he finds out about uh, uh, Selena Vega's OnlyFans. <laughs> He's, he, he was probably the first subscriber. He's like, you know, uh, I want to own OnlyFans. The OnlyFans are the WWE fans. I tell you who to like. That's who the fans are. You're my fans. The OnlyFans. <laughs> I bet. He, I bet he walked up to Alistair and was like, Hey, you remember? You remember those good old days back in NXT? You want to have a run like that? Have her go naked. <laughs> Excuse me, you, you heard me. Well, that, that's the thing. She she doesn't go nude. She just does cosplays. At a boy, at a so. girl. She's smart. <laughs> and people are still gonna pay a lot for it. Fucking name. Hey, I'm not. Well, Travis, I gotta ask you over there. Are you gonna get Kiara Hogan's OnlyFans? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Plain as a no. No. <laughs> I'm gonna pay for content, bud. <laughs> I mean, now, unless y'all want to get me a subscription oh, you uh, shut for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> this, guy, this guy would never be out of the bathroom, this guy. No. <laughs> she's so very Travis at? He's taking another shit? God damn. Hey, man, she's very bootyless. I will give her that, the lovely Miss Kier Hogan. She is that girl on fire. So yes. Yeah, and uh, her, her and Tasha stole Falabar's money this week. Yes, oh, my is. God, that made me so happy. That was fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that they steal money committing a crime over here, giddy on his face. I and, felt uh, so bad for Falaba, <laughs> but it was funny as hell. He he was bamboozled by her alluring ways. 
Yeah, and they replaced it with electrical tape. Yes. <laughs> also, I don't think anybody told Fall about it. That, that she's a lesbian. <laughs> yes one thing before we get into AEW 2 after we predict this I just would like to say not only is Kiara Hogan ghetto fabulous but after seeing Brandy Rhodes on oh wow I can't wait to get to that that. alright let's 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 get this main event out of the way so we can get to that bit because that was fire let's go alright Rich Swan defending against Sammy Callahan Uh, Rich Swan Rich Swan Swan I fucking hate Rich Swan, but fine. I'm, why do you I'm hate Rich Swan? <laughs> like, why why did right. he all of a sudden show up again? Where the fuck does this guy come from? <laughs> He's been there for like. Wasn't he like hurt though? Yeah, he was injured for the first half of the year, and then they did the whole thing with Eric Young, where he kept getting his leg broken. Yeah. My leg is broken. I'm do do do. I don't fucking know. I uh, I'm gonna say, he. I'm going Rich Swan, but I'm hoping it's. You're hoping for a change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Swan was like, he got his leg broken three times. Okay, do a flip. Uh, do a flip. Flip it. <laughs> uh, we we also ahead. found out the radicals, if rumors are correct, are going to WWE. Um, well. well Poor them, because Vince got, is going to do jack shit with them. I got to say, cruiserweight division. Put them on NXT, get them going against Santos Escobar. Cruiserweight, man. It's, uh, it's also strange for Impact to actually write somebody off. Normally, it's just like they have one match and then they're gone. You know what's funny about that? Because when they were talking about the Rascals leaving, some yeah. douchebag wrote, oh, he's probably going to, Trey Miguel's probably going to go to MLW be with his girlfriend, Alicia Toot. I'm like, they're broke up, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Uh, How do you fuck that up? How do you fuck that up? I, I just feel sorry for Trey Miguel. <laughs> Trey Miguel over yeah, here, the guy. prince of midair. Friggin got out of midair, man. Friggin leaving the interview queen. Yeah. Got... Okay, so that is turning point. Those are our predictions. We'll see if we uh, we get more than two out of nine this week, this time. But... <clears throat> And say on the subject of special events, the time is almost upon us for some real cowboy shit. Promo Series 5 Enemy Lines is next week, beginning with the pre-launch show on this coming Tuesday. The winner stays on Gauntlet for the Knowledge Championship begins with the Phoenix defending against Alex Dorio in the Ultimate Undertaker Showdown. The winner defends against the Demon S, and the winner of that goes on to our main show on Thursday, November 19th, to defend against Moses Marquez. And oh, yeah. this is only the beginning of the night for Moses as he also steps up to face the shape in a promo duel. And if what I've seen so far of the shape's promo, it will sure be a killer. Also in a promo exhibition, Mike Larkin does the dance, literally, with his pop culture <laughs> history co host, Brittany Savage. And she always lives up to her name. Good luck, Mike. Hey, well, whatever. I'm not afraid of the munchkin from Munchkin Land. She keeps shrinking, keeps shrinking, keeps on shrinking. It's going down. And in the it's highly... Okay, Mike, you, you know what line you can hit her with, though? You can hit her with this one. This, nah, this I got one. her with some lines, man. Y'all got to just see the rest of my promo. I got some things to say. Get off my chest better than the rest. Let's we'll hear the line anyway. Fuck no. I got to say for the promo, no spoilers. No, I want to hear most of the line. Oh, God. I was going to say, you should have hit her with the line from that Brandy hit her with last night. Was that who's that? Who the hell told you tonight was open mic night, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> and in the highly anticipated main events, it could not be any more predictable. The Demon Ash rises from her grave once again to defend the promo championship in the microphone standoff. Like a microphone standoff. Her three challengers are newcomer money maker Chris Durham, mystery man the watchdog Alexander Rowan, who finally promises to reveal his true identity. And looking to make it the third time a charm going after the demoness, Moses Marquez. That's fucking right. That's right. With the one thing you didn't mention, though, is this is her last title oh, defense. Okay. We, we shall Roger. see. Um, well, I'll say one thing about the demoness that a lot of people don't know. And it needs to come out. And I think it really needs to be valid. She is the queen of the cooter punch. Very true. And... Um, 
you've just heard the predictions championship for turning point there will also be predictions uh, for survivor series at promo series next week for more information go to maxrassinguk.weebly.com when is it mike what november 19th like a microphone standoff yeah that's oh, when it is okay. that's when it is it's next week Thanks, I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. I was about to say, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't think it was that simple. I thought Next I had to get something week. up. Next week! <laughs> Thank you. That That's a staple for Max Wrestling now. Just Eric Next Young yelling, week. Next week. <laughs> I, I forgot about that. Next, Next week. week! Next week! Next <laughs> week! <laughs> he is legit Eminem just losing. <laughs> Next week! When you come for the king, you best not miss. Max Wilson presents Promo Series 5, Enemy Lines, November 19th. Go to maxdressinguk.weebly.com for more information. Well, if you're out of shape, show me something. Maybe a couple of years ago I could have. But look at that. Steady as a rock. Yeah, but I cut promos with this hand. Hey everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atute here, and you are currently listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. It's time to take it to the max. What's up everybody, this is AJ Kirsch, one half of the MLW commentary team, and you're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. It's time to take it to the max. Hey, this is Tommy Dreamer, and you're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast giving you all your wrestling information to the extreme. All right, it is Thursday, which means last night was another installment in the Wednesday Night War. So, um, both shows are pretty strong this week. Uh, AEW kicked off with Team Taz talking more shit to Darby. Uh, Cage gets Matt Seidel for the FTW prop. I'm not calling it a championship. It's it's not a championship. Maybe it was an ECW, but it's like they all of a sudden remembered Brian Cage is, has got the belt because Taz was complaining that they've never given him anything in AEW a couple of weeks ago. Well, there you go. So, oh, shit. I, I'll he's, tell you he's right got the now. FTW belt. Let him defend it. I'll tell you right now, if I ever have another rematch against Cypher, I'm going to make that damn Darby Allen jacket. Ho, oh, oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I'm going to make an FTW belt. Oh, oh no. I I'm going to make that too. jacket and I'm going to, I'm just going to go give him a bear hug. I mean, <laughs> you, you already made a custom promo title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then after the match, they were kind of bitching about the, the rating system again. Uh, when, when Ricky Stark speaks, I kind of tune out because I can't stand the guy. Nope. Dress is like a twat, and he nearly killed Darby Allen, so nope. Shoes. <laughs> Shoes with no socks. Oh, that annoys the fuck out of me. Short ass pants. Yeah, that too. Everything about Ricky Starks. Uh, meanwhile, on NXT, I love this because it's completely left field. Um, Gargano introduced the Wheel of Challenges for his North American title. <laughs> Stop looking at my wheel. The, the, the clearly loaded wheel lands on Leon Ruff. Uh, and as Damien Priest gets a close look at the match, Ruff pulls off an upset to become the new champion. Go, Leon. Go, Leon. The, the Go, weird, Leon. The weird All thing was... All I can was, think about is, is him just freaking out in the back to Regal afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like... A priest gave him his car keys. Just get out of here. Go. Oh yeah, he's all like, he's like, he's all. He so he fucking tried, he tried to put the belt around Leon Ruff. <laughs> the belt's too the big ground. for his waist. <laughs> I'm like, well, Jesus Christ, that's a small man, but all right. And so he's like, hey, look, Johnny's coming, and he's gonna be real pissed. Here's the keys to a George challenge. It was like straight out of a movie. Here's yeah. the keys to the Black <laughs> Challenger. Get out of here. I'm like, dude, this. When did Damien Priest become so fucking cool? <laughs> Since fucking always, I told you that back when we were damn uh, 
recording shit all the show over together. because this guy was just oh my, I didn't like it. He was just kind of droning on, and <laughs> now he's got a fucking personality. He's over here giving his car keys away to this surprisingly <laughs> lucky winner, dude, and he's fucking gone. Oh, I love it. The funny thing was, is Leon Ruff's name was kind of written on the on the wheel, whereas he could have just put the name on there anyway. Right? I was like, <laughs> who's he covering up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Gag <coughs> Gagano's plan backfired, and then later on, when he was trying to appeal the decision to Regal, and he was just like, "Okay, I admit it, I rigged the wheel. It was a joke. He's like, it was a goof. It was a goof. All right, jeez, I goofed. Come on." He's all, you know it's not. He's all, you know he shouldn't be the champion. You kidding me? Ba- basically, the doors. Gargano turned into Donald Trump. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> He's just flipping his leg. God, it was a goof. And, re- yeah, Regal essentially told him to bugger off. He's like, well, you said it. Goodbye. Pam. Like, that's what you get, stupid. ACL. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, now... Yeah, let's get to this segment on Dynamite because Cody said he will not seek a rematch against Darby, but he does yes. want one with MJF. Yes. He's then interrupted by somebody. Um, Jack's girlfriend. Not to not to who's? kill the not to kill the joke, but I can't tell her name. <laughs> Whose girlfriend? Shaq Shaquille O'Neal. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. I thought I thought you said somebody else then. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like Bianca Belair and Ariane Andrews' love child. Seriously, didn't even... Jade Cargill. Yeah, Jade I, got, I got his Cargill. first name, Jade something or other. amps, bro. Um, <sighs> promo wasn't great. It was kind of cringy. not a wrestling fan at all. Well, apparently she's been training in the Nightmare Factory. But, yeah, somebody hey, needs to work train with her on promos. Yes, she was trained by A.R. Fox, Heath Slater, and Q.T. Marshall. No, it's just Heath now. That's a nice little group of dudes. She made her debut November 11, 2000. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. You go, girl. So did they, like, they trained her in ring, I'm assuming, but not on the mic? Yeah, it seems yeah. like it. <laughs> well, so even that, like, I, was, I, I had severe flashbacks to when they had to cut to commercial in front of, like, in the middle of. Oh, yeah, when promo. Baker cut that awful promo and then she came back absolutely gold. I, so, this was like yeah. 10 times worse. So are they setting up Cody Rhodes and Brandy to take on Shaq and this girl? I sincerely hope not. I but, don't uh, know because what happened afterwards threw the whole fucking thing off. The, the whole thing was weird. It was just sort of, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, seriously. But th- I, 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 would, I never thought I would ever say it, but thank God for fucking Brandy. She hey, was easily hey. the best part of the segment. Like I don't know the where Brandy's time... from, but you knew she was from the streets at oh, that yeah. point. The whole time through the segment, I was like, when is Brandy going to come out? Because this is just, she's she's out here talk, talking shit about Cody's manhood and stuff. Uh, where the hell is his wife? It was so good. So she goes up the ramp and then Brandy just comes out to the other side of the tunnel. Who the hell told you it was open mic night? Oh, I <laughs> fucking died when she said that. She says, you so, up here smacking your gums at my man. No, you my problem. I'm like, oh, God damn it. So for those that want to know where Brandy Rhodes is from, she was born in Canton, Michigan. Well, there you go. Hey, Detroit close, maybe. I don't know. Also, do you know who friggin'? Okay, so Jade Cargill, as I'm looking her up, she has a daughter with her partner, MLB second baseman, Brandon Phillips. Apparently she was with Brandon Phillips, and now she's with Shaq. Brandon Phillips from the Phillies? Yeah, Brandon Phillips, bro. The, the funny is when she looked into the camera and said her name, I, I just heard, who, who, Yeah, same who? here. <laughs> I, I, I just saw that meme of Snoop Dogg get real close to the mic. Who? I mean, I don't know if it was just like lack of promo skills or if stage fright just got to her. But, yeah, it was it was bad. Whoever helped Brett Baker well, with her I, promo I, skills in a week, do it with her. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, whoever's helping out Brett. You know what? Brett, uh, Brett call, call Adam one time and. Give this poor ch- girl some pointers. Mm. Even even Cody. I mean, if you're going to learn to cut a promo, Cody. I mean, yeah, Cody can help her out. I don't see why Cody shouldn't, shouldn't have helped her out. Yeah, good <laughs> God. Cody coming out. I was so excited. I'm like, hell yeah, here comes a killer fucking promo. And then we just got like a complete shit one. And then fucking Brandy came out. I was, I was 
filled with mixed. Of all the people to cut up. just the greatest promo of the night. <laughs> Randy Randy. Randy. <laughs> maybe, know, right? maybe maybe the whole thing was she deliberately called... maybe the whole thing was yeah, deliberately but... bad to make Brandy look awesome. Yeah, the, straight the, up the called her uh, ever. Oh man. Ever. Can I just say I'm looking at this chick's fitness photos right now. I gotta say, not bad. She's got a nice bod. There's one where she's dressed like a superhero. There's one in the ring. She's got a nice little blue ensemble over here by the pool. But nice, very nice. Yeah, trust Mike to go to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> this is Google Photos right now, but I'm oh, okay. There it is. Oh, I mean, love that's it. right. It Love didn't it. even sound like Brandy. <laughs> no, it didn't. No. That's what I think we made the whole thing so much better. She she yeah. always talks with so Brandy? much class and distinction, and then she just comes out and goes full on street. No. That was good. And it, didn't it, even miss a beat. It was amazing. <laughs> and then like she turns around to go to the back, and then she just gets a booty tap, and I'm like, wow. Okay. I was like, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, I want to do that, but I'm not doing that. But back with the Shaq thing, like, I'm mixed emotions on it because Wasn't God is going to be wrestle such a big show. Yeah, exactly. Like That's what I was, uh, well, the past like five years, really. Huh? I know but, they've been teasing it for a while, yeah. a long yeah. while. He entered, like, the, the Andre Memorial Battle Royal. Like, Was it that or was it the Royal like, Rumble? No, he was in the Andre the Giant Memorial uh, Battle Royal. Yeah, they gave him the that was like about, I want to say that was like about what about five years ago. It was yep, yep. the same year Shane wrestled Undertaker. 2016, so four years. Oh yeah, yeah. four years ago. Because I remember him coming out with yeah. everybody else down the ramp, and there's wait a minute, is that Shaq? Well, yeah, you kind of hard to miss this big fucker. <laughs> well, that was the well, that so, was the year he was very the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Yeah. So like I, I'm torn on it because. I'm like, okay, do it just because it would be just a huge middle finger to WWE. <laughs> but I'm like, please don't fucking do it because yeah. we don't need that. It was so anticlimactic because she turned around and go, oh, by the way, you know who is big? Oh, shit, who's going who's gonna to debut? Shaq. Wait, what? And I'm like, eh. It's like how I felt when Mike Tyson came out. Like, oh, that's fantastic. Like, look at Mike Tyson. He's out here throwing punches. <laughs> he looks great. But then I'm like, is he going to start taking bumps? I don't need to see Shaq taking bumps. I understand the NBA, NBA, NBA season is over, but I enjoy watching TNT with him and 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 fucking and, and Charles Barkley and all them dudes. So uh, I'm with I'm with Trap. Uh, no, I don't want. I mean, you want to show up? You want to like give Cody a boot and like never come back? I'm cool with that. Yeah, I would have rather I would have rather preferred Chris Jericho and Mike Tyson. Oh fuck no. I still well, don't want that, and my, people are still saying it might it. happen. I don't want it, but I would prefer that than Cody and Shaq. I'll be honest with you; I would rather have Cody and Shaq than I was all. I was not about having Tyson and his ass against Jericho, and I'm like, no, from something from ten years ago that nobody fucking remembers. At least Shaq will go in there and you know do some tackles, and you got Cody Rhodes. Jericho and Tyson would have been the drizzle and shits. Facts. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, on NXT, while all this chaos is going on, we've got a cruiserweight title match between Santos Escobar and Jake Atlas. Santos, Dude. Jake fucking Atlas, bro. He's great. I used to, you know, like I remember, like because Trav had brought up back in the day when we used to actually review AEW and NXT like in detail. And I used to just get mad because why don't they just like let this dude be gay? Because you know that's his that's his gimmick. He's gay. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know what? Fuck that. It doesn't fucking matter because he's out here just showing the fuck off. Like, he is just... I always knew he was good, but, like, I don't know. These last, like, two months, he's just been on another level. Hmm. Which one did he attack in, out, outside? Because it was so dark, I didn't even see the face. I think it was... Uh, with... What is it? Uh, not uh, not DJZ, the other one. Oh, Raul Mendoza. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was about to say, when this guy get a fucking pipe, by the way, comes in running in, just bing, hits this one guy. I'm going to get you, too. I'm like, well, you got a pipe, why don't you just get him now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. But either Jake. way, uh, Santos Escobar retains anyway. Close uh, one. Yeah. I want to see Atlas win the Cruiserweight title after all this. I really do. I do, I really yeah. 
I, I also wanted him to be the fourth guy in, in, in the Legato, but I'll take him being cruiserweight champ. Hey, man, that dude's cool. And here's the thing, too. Like you were saying, why don't they just make him full on, you know, gay because he's a homosexual? Rainbow DDT, hello. That's, that's what they. <laughs> They're not calling. They're just calling it calling like a cartwheel DDT. I'm like, that's like it's called the Rainbow DDT. Let him use that fucking name. Who cares? Hey, as long as he's not acting like Orlando Jordan at TNA, man. Oh, hey, oh, hey. we we don't talk about Orlando Jordan. No, we don't. Um, hey, whoa! Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Before we move on, I just would like to say, what the hell does that tell you? When the Ultimate Warrior, God rest his soul, his last official professional wrestling match was against Orlando Jordan. What? Yeah, remember Tells that? Me that he was big... desperate to shit for money. He was. Remember they wrestled in Italy, the new wrestling evolution, and it was him and Orlando oh Jordan. God. Rob Van Dam. Italy. Like minutes. Yeah. He's poor warrior. It was like 2008, Dazzy Dangerously. 2008. Like yeah, you guys want me to send you the match? It's only oh, like no. six minutes. Hell no. <laughs> no, please, no, thank you. <laughs> That's like you're telling me like you want. To, I found this old New Jack match. Like no thanks. <laughs> I don't need to see a video of this man stabbing a man or, or, or heaven forbid, a warrior dropping somebody on the head. Yes, I would not send you the mass transit video. No, thank you. No, I've seen that, and I'm like, huh? I don't, I don't, I don't. I never knew what possessed me, Jack, besides the cocaine. cocaine. <laughs> thank you, Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, so crazy things happened after this match on NXT, uh, and Mike sends us the match anyway. <laughs> uh, Raquel Gonzalez prepares to face Zia Lee, but is told she's not there and takes it out on poor Boa, who then received some weird message by seemingly some kind of Yakuza boss. It just what, the, what the fuck is going on? I have no fucking clue. Like, first of all, he was terrified by this back. dragon going around the screens and stuff. Shinsuke is coming back. I don't know. Maybe they're revamping Kushida. Well, he, he, he has had a tendency to just kick people's asses lately. That's true. It's been... Damn, no, I wouldn't call, he wouldn't call him a heel. Was, I just call him a tweener. If that was Shinsuke coming back to NXT, I, I would pop for that. I would go bananas. I think Shinsuke, I think Shizaro should be back in NXT. Kevin Owens at this point. Everybody. Yeah, basically, yeah, everybody they've ruined from NXT, just send them back. Which is almost all of them. Yeah. Strangely enough, the only ones they didn't ruin was The Shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, no. They did they ruin Bray them. at one point. Well, yeah, they ruined The Shield at the end, but <laughs> look but at Roman they ruined them. now. Um they finally broke up the New Day. I don't know when the... I don't even really think I've seen Big E on TV. He hasn't done much since they broke up. And it's like, what was the fucking point of that? I thought this, the point of that was to break him up and make him like a main eventer. Yeah, well, I mean, same thing with Peyton and Billy Kay to break up the Iconics, do nothing with Billy and then put Peyton in another random tag team with Lacey Evans. Why? Because. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Yeah, she'd be great in a tag team. She she's already in a tag team. Break him up, she'd be great in this tag team. Break him up, put him in a devil one. Ridiculous. He'd be like, remember that Al Snow guy? Yeah, he was in the New Rockers. <laughs> oh shit. Hey man, I'd take head cheese over for you. Head cheese. Jeez. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to dynamite in a bunkhouse brawl. Uh, we had the Nightmare Family. Supposed to be a bunkhouse stampede. Well, it, whatever it was, it was bloody. It's just a bunkhouse match, which apparently just means wear jeans and a t-shirt because everybody's going to bleed. Yeah, and, and there's going to be rodeo black... stuff around the ring. Can somebody call the blacktop bully? <laughs> hey, there you go. But, I mean, Blade and QT both get bloodied. And oh, yeah. Dustin easily causes the most property damage during the match, just throwing everybody into everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> um... And he also takes a nasty bump through two chairs. Oh, yeah. Ouch. Like, that had to hurt. But still, the Nightmare family managed to pull it off. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, Dusty was looking down at this match. Like, I remember those days. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as Dusty saw blood, that's my boys. You know, that's my kids right there. <laughs> so it's on national television. I don't give a shit. They bleed walking down the hallway. <laughs> 
They they wake up and bleed. <laughs> they, wake, they wake up and bleed. And Brandy's doing a, a shot of brandy, and all of a sudden, bam! Refrigerator door closes. Cody's bleeding. <laughs> so uh, I I watched last night's AEW on a streaming service. Yes, and <laughs> it was uh, they they don't show the commercials, and like when it's picture to picture, you know, it's the commentary is muted. Well, what I watch, it's not muted. And you can hear what they're, like, they're still doing commentary through the commercials. And yeah, they do uh, like fight TV and shit. Yeah, right. TV. So um, they uh, they were so beyond confused as to what uh, the bunny was using to cut open QT's head. They they thought it was scissors, but it was spurs. Get him with the Spurs, eh? They had they they probably spent about five minutes trying to figure out what it was she was using. It, it was hilarious. Like Jr. and uh, uh, Excalibur were just going back and forth. Is it is it scissors? I don't know. Maybe it was a horseshoe or <laughs> some cowboy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, then it, it wasn't. It wasn't until they came back from commercial, or when they finally said Spurs. <laughs> uh, follow following this match, we had MJF's induction into the Inner Circle. Uh, Ortiz still ain't happy about it. Sammy Guevara yeah. is missing. We'll find out why in just a second. Um, and Jericho tries to convince Ortiz to you know give him give him a chance. And MJF kind of proves his worth by taking them all to Vegas, baby. Yeah, Vegas, baby. Because that's what every guy wants to do. Just want to go to Vegas. Yeah, he also apparently forgot how to sing. Bullshit, I say. <laughs> Bullshit. He was pitch perfect in the in the thing with Jericho. And then last night it was just, happy birthday. <laughs> I'm like, you fucking lie. I was going to say, yeah, you talk about be over there pitch perfect all of a sudden friggin mjf's gonna start doing the musical Whip it! Bow, 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 just start singing Is that M- mjf could absolutely sing a cappella. absolutely good i'm gonna see you whip it gonna treat you right hey man just a little um you know time tonight yep definitely see it so the reason sammy guevara was missing was because he thought they were meeting at the beach <laughs> So uh, you Appar- sent me to the beach. Apparently, MJF only sent him one email. He's like, whoa, I sent you a second email, bro. I only got one email. Well, that's what happens when you don't look at your email. And then <laughs> he turned to everybody else, and even, like, uh, J.K. goes like, oh, I, got, I got two emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, that was the best. He's like, you know, oh, Sammy, God. Sammy's probably trying to avoid social media after, you know, yeah. what happened all the <laughs> yeah, as long as he doesn't not, talk I, I about Sammy. you know sexual assault, he's fine. <laughs> I love Sammy, but the one thing I've noticed on most of his social media is it's either stuff directly uh, directly to his YouTube or a lot of "Hey, look at me and my girlfriend." <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm not mad at him. I love, I love, you know, I love Sammy. I'm still a member of the Panda Fam. You know what I'm saying? He still is the best ever. But but yeah, you can totally <laughs> tell that his eyes. Social media trends have just taken a hard left turn. Some sometimes that's one of the best parts about Sammy Guevara is that he's still so immature. And that's all right. <laughs> we we understand, we get it, and we move on. Yeah, it's okay to be immature, but there's some things you don't talk about on social media, Sammy. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, he's still got We're his ticket to Vegas. Podcast. Yeah, oh, definitely on a podcast. I would do. Would you, and then my whole thing is, is like, why would you have to go so crazy <laughs> with the, with the word? Just be like, I, I, you know, why can't you just? I don't know. Why, like, look at all the goddamn construction workers. Like these guys don't ever get filed for harassment suits. They yeah. say the nasty shit ever. Freaking cat calling. There you go. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he's still he's still going to Vegas, and. Ortiz and Sammy still didn't look happy about it, but okay. That's right, Sammy. Keep your hands to yourself in Vegas. 
It's going to turn out that his uh his tickets coach. It may be it may be fully yes. nude, but uh, no touchy. Wait, he's in coach. Ah, what a fucker! It's uh, it's probably going to take him forever to get back from Nevada because you know they take forever with stuff like this. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Uh, back on NXT, uh, we had Candice LeRae versus Tony Storm. Um, it, you know, could have gone either way, but Candice got the win. And after the match, Ghostface, who they still haven't revealed, is obviously Indy Hartwell attacks and good old Shatty even the odds. Can I just say one thing? Uh, is it about Shatty? Well, besides that, okay. can I say one other? Yeah, so, so, so long as you Shotzi. say something about Shotzi as well. Go ahead. Welcome to the power pit. Shotzi is fine as a motherfucker. Mwah. And number two, other thing I will say about that is, yo, the only bad thing about not seeing Tony Storm on NXT UK anymore is getting to hear Kaylee Ray go, Tony Storm! But it was great to see her on NXT do the damn thing. <laughs> There's nothing like an angry Scottish accent. I know. Great. Bloody fucking... <laughs> oh, yeah, bloody fucking, <laughs> fucking bloody fucking stand up, Randy. Stand up, I'm begging you. Stand up, Randy. And I'm like, all right, you go, Drew. The, Mike, the great thing about you using the phone is that it goes sort of it's grainy and so it, it's perfect for the Scottish accent. It does. It does. Man. <laughs> totally stop. <laughs> I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> okay, anyway. that, that that's our Scottish air. Eh. You know what reminds, reminds me of the look of the Irish too when they're talking about you know Seamus McKiernan. It's an eerie boil, and I'm like, God damn Disney Plus, thank you so much. I, I you just reminded me as well when when Travis was talking about dressing as a leprechaun. Did you do the whole Wayne's World thing? You know, I'm the leprechaun. Oh, I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Want to leave but can't move. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right following this on nxt uh timothy thatcher defeats dexter loomis oh timothy thatcher's out in the just fucking jumping people on the back just like an asshole i'm like what the fuck man timothy thatcher is very much an asshole <laughs> yeah, oh, really? seriously. Yeah. um but strangely after the match cameron grams Got to jump on Dexter Loomis, and let's be honest, the only reason he was able to even touch uh, Dexter Loomis was because he blinded him, put mm-hmm. a bag over the head. Big old bag over his head. Luckily, and there were no zombies this week. He's on then Cameron Graves came to me. In. <laughs> oh, I, I can only Look, imagine Cameron. what the rematch is going to be after what we got at Halloween Havoc. Sack on the head match. Because uh, when's the next takeover? Because obviously we're not getting one next week. It's not before Probably going to be Rock. Rumble week. Oh yeah, Rumble week. That makes sense. So they're going to build this for three months, two months? I was going to say, they're going to wait all the way to January? This is why it makes no sense that they don't have a takeover before Survivor Series this year. Oh, you, well, you do know that the whole... Cody apparently bought his name back by giving yeah. him Badge at the Beach. Yeah. So... I wouldn't really go I to a beach be in the winter, though. Yeah, that's true. But well, they also got a um, Super Brawl, I think. You can do uh, Fall Brawl. Yeah, Fall Brawl, oh, too. It's winter. It's winter. Well, as I'm looking at these events, guys, apparently they're going to have another Starcade like they've been doing on the network, like those house shows and shit. Like, oh, yeah, well, I was going to say, can't. they may as well do an NXT Starcade in December, which is when Starcade actually was anyway. Correct. Starkey was an actual big show, though. So. Yeah, and it, it's just been a house show in WWE. Complete waste. Yeah, yeah, well, that's WWE's stupidity for you. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't make Starkey a house show, but then they'll make a big event out of Super Brawl. Has anybody, has anybody heard anything about uh, War Games yet? As far war as we know, no War Games this year. But it, it makes no Oops. sense as well, because they clearly... They've got the perfect situation for it with uh, the brand. If that's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. Right, well, let's just finish off with NXT it. there because, of course, the brand came out to talk more shit. Um, Peter Dune was... Oh, goddamn Peter Dune. He he was 
presented exactly how he is. He's a killer. Oh man. You know, how you doing? Keep it moving. Love it. Absolutely. As, uh, yeah. as McCaffrey said, dead. Dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What he said, <laughs> came out last week, took a chair to Kyle O'Reilly's back. Dead. Dead. He said, he said, he said, I took some, he said, took out the, the, the Irish dude with a car door. Dead. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I think... like, oh, he said, I thought it was a little bit drastic, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> I like what you did. A little bit violent, but we'll talk about that. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit violent, but we'll talk about that. Pat McAfee is just such the shit I think, DNA. I love it so much. I think Pat McAfee is going to rival Jericho in just turning anything into a catchphrase. How you doing? Keep, Keep it moving. Up. Dead. Just the best. He's, he's just the fucking best. Um, it just, was yeah. tough for me because, obviously, I watched both shows at the same time. So while Pat McAfee was talking... On the other screen, I've got Eddie Kingston talking. I'm like, who the fuck do I listen to? Right? Oh, yeah, God. that was a tough one. Um, but yeah, we'll get to Dynamite in just a minute because on NXT, it was tag team titles on the line as Lorcan and Birch def- defended and defeated uh, against Brizango. Despite a little interference from Drake Maverick, and then, of course, they just beat the shit out of both of them. Mm-hmm. Well, all three of them, sorry. I just want to see Drake Maverick and Killian Dane Molly Wapen win the tag titles. Well, That'd be nice, but we'll see. hopefully One now day. if they if they're uh, going to be working with the brand, I don't even know if that's what they're calling them, but that's what I'm calling them. The um, Maverick hopefully it will be taking perfect, it a little more seriously. Yeah, me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, as long as it's not because you said the brand. Yeah, as long not as the it's band. The, as long as it's not the band, we're uh, okay. What that fat douche Bubba the Love douche? Yeah, fuck him, man. Yeah, we uh we all know how shit NWO ripoffs work out, don't we? <clears throat> okay, moving on back to Dynamite. Sean Spears won a match. Hell ah. yeah. And then and fucking and Tully Blanchard like Scorpio hugged Scott. the fucking rep silly because, oh, thank you for guys for counting the pin. Yeah, what, what was he using? A slug? A who? He hit, hit him with a loaded slug or something? A steel slug? slug. Yeah. I didn't fucking catch him hit with it. I, I I know he did something, but I didn't catch what he had. He keeps like a like a metal bar. Oh oh, it is so oh the glove. glove. Yeah. Oh, he gives him what it is. is he gives him a piece. of... I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, he gives him a piece of like aluminum or whatever, and it supposedly like goes, which makes no sense to me because it goes in like the forearm. Yeah. Of like the glove, and then he just punches the dude, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Like I would understand, like if it was like something he put in his hand to get, to make, you know what I mean, something like that. That would make yeah. sense, but that would just break your hand. But I, whatever, it's just meant to be the gl- the loaded glove. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's just they kept calling it a, a steel slug. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah, what the fuck is a steel like a steel slug, bro? I'm thinking shotgun chill. Yeah. <laughs> well, you say I'm slug, like, oh, and God, I'm thinking he's of a little slimy fucking... thing. <laughs> But yeah, Sean Spears finally gets a victory. Well, he got one last week, I think, as well, or the week before. So it's finally some him. rejuvenation in uh, in Sean Spears. Following this, Ty Conti is finally back on our TV screens, praise the Lord, uh, as she goes one-on-one with Red Velvet. Um, AKA. AKA who? Conti got some ass. AKA Red Velvet, the girlfriend of Mr. Wes Briscoe. Really? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, she was accompanied to the ring by Brandy, who obviously was not in a very good mood. <laughs> Dead ass out there, bitch. Get that W. Excuse yeah. me? You fucking heard me. Uh, and with a little assistance from Anna J, Ty Conti gets the win. With Dark Order barely lurking in the tunnel. Yeah, I like it when they do that. They did it with Hangman as well when Box won yeah. the titles. Very sneaky. Yeah, they want they want themselves some content because you know Johnny well, likes I mean, himself some cheeks. I don't blame him. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> uh, and finally, as we said, Eddie, Eddie Kingston came out and vows to bounce back from full gear. Any one of you would have quit. I'm not gonna quit. I'm like, okay. I love it when he talks trash to the crowd because normally when a heel does it, it's cringy. But when Eddie Kingston does it, you know he's he's 
probably gonna kill you. Like, you don't right. need to tell me my name. I <laughs> keeps uh, the man. And, and obviously, he's clearly uh, got some favoritism going on when it comes to the Lucha Brothers, as Penta went one on one with Phoenix. <laughs> you know, just constantly referring to Penta as his best friend, barely talking about Phoenix. So we saw it coming for weeks. Um, no. No, you're so undermining it. Like, it, it, from, like, forget the whole best friend thing. He gets in the ring after Pentagon wins. He fucking kicks Phoenix out. Fuck, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And I he, died. He did it perfectly because it was so subtle but so obvious at the same time. <laughs> I was like, did you just kick him out of the ring? And then fucking Harold's like, ah, he kicked him out of the ring. Uh, well, I mean, during the match, they almost ripped each other's masks off, and we got a pretty good look at both of their faces. Okay, see, hold on. I got to talk about this because everybody is fucking up in arms. Okay. Every single time these guys have really ever faced each other outside, outside of AEW, the mask spot is something they do constantly. It's what it is they do. Pentagon always shows, like, 80% of his fucking face, but you never see it all. Phoenix always gets that left eye ripped off. But what normally ends up happening is they've gigged, and so at least they have all the blood to cover it. Yeah. And for some reason, they didn't go that route, probably because it wasn't that brutal of a match. But this is nothing new. Everybody that's freaking out about it, you if you watched more uh, AAA, if you watched more fucking Lucha Underground, you would not be as shocked with this. Do I? Am I not a fan of it? One million percent. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm also not surprised. Yeah, I mean, it'd probably be more impactful if they never did it, and then just did it once. Was like, oh shit. Yeah, exactly. But this is like their thing. They're they're brothers. Yeah, remember, remember uh, Undertaker Kane SummerSlam 2000? I think it was the first time, really, that Kane's mask got ripped off and they just called off the match and he's, like, covering his face, walking back up the ramp. <laughs> that is I do correct. remember that. Uh, and then, of course, to finish the night after Eddie Kingston kicked Phoenix out of the ring, he's like, you don't need him no more. <laughs> we, uh, I completely forgot about this as well. I mean, right up until the moment the music hit, the pack finally made his return. Uh, and confronts Eddie King. Well, he basically wants to kill Eddie Kingston. And I think it's basically yeah, because Kingston that. stole his group. Oh, yeah, that's stole right. They're going to have a... group. That's right. They're going to have a, 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 a custody on a pole match. <laughs> custody of the Leech Brothers. Uh, I mean, overall, it was a great show, but I wouldn't say it changed the landscape of power or whatever it was Tony Khan said have... before the show. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I didn't even think... I'd, at first watch, I wasn't like, you know, oh my god, the show was really great. I was like, this show kind of feels a little under to me. Yeah, but I mean, everything, every, I think, feel, I felt, I think what it is is everything kind of started off slow and ended hot. Yeah, I mean, Pac was obviously the biggest moment of the show, but the way oh, yeah, Tony Khan was talking, we were expecting a lot of big things to happen. Obviously, people are still expecting Sting, like it's going to happen every week. Oh, my stop! God. Okay, Sting ain't coming. Stop it! He's not coming. Stop thinking Sting's Moses, coming. Do I, don't, I don't know what fucking dirt sheet somebody read that's half wrong about everything all the time. And I know it ain't Melcher because I would have known if Melcher would have said something stupid about Sting because I would have called his dumb ass out about it. Probably Brian he ain't Alvarez. coming. Hey, I first off, more... Brian Alvarez is my guy too. And even <laughs> he didn't say shit about Sting. Okay, then uh, ringside I news. I, there, I that's think probably more, more about it. I think it's more wishful thinking than anything because everybody yeah. would... doesn't need Sting. I know. I I, like know. I've said for months on end, he is part Sting for two things: his relationship with kids and the face paint. Other than that, I'm he has no. He's got no fucking other ties to anything Sting. He's more fucking Sabu and Tommy Dreamer because he gives no fucks about his own body. So I got a question. Are they going to bring in Rye Douche? No, oh, please. Fuck God, no. no. If they do I that, had, ex expect NXT to win multiple weeks, like a month straight, dead ass. I, I have not heard a single thing until I popped into the stream last night and somebody was saying how, oh, uh, said something about Ryback. I'm like, uh, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, he's supposed to 
show up in AEW, I'm like, for fuck's sake, no. Yeah, who the Ryback fuck told has him it was one open place mic he night? Can go. In my mind, Ryback has one place he can go, and that's MLW, and that is it. I don't see him going anywhere. Or TNA. Impact. Or Impact. Go impact to fucking is... Impact. They had or a chance. Just fucking retire. Or just do your podcast and talk about how yeah. much Meltzer sucks. That was my idea. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the world would be better if Melty was dead. And I'm like, what? Motherfucker, did it, didn't you hurt people? Yeah. I'm dumb as fuck. I'm go, dumb go as fuck. Like, the table misses the fucking table. Weren't you, I'm going to say, weren't you the dumb <laughs> shit guy that wrestled longer than Odd Man Johnson? But yeah, you're just as dumb as Odd Man Johnson. Do you remember when he dropped Jack Swagger on his head on a backdrop? Yes. That's yeah. that's the the number one thing I'm talking about. That's the kind I cannot stand this motherfucker. I still remember to this day working for uh, this inventory company fucking like six, seven, eight years back. And we're in the hotel room getting ready for the next, you know, we're relaxing. It's Monday. I have to watch uh, fucking Raw. And out comes, I think it was like Punk. And I I am, I would, anybody wants to ask me about wrestling? Oh, because Punk's on the screen. I'll fucking chop your ear off. The second fucking Ryback showed up, they're like, who the hell is this giant fucker? I don't give a shit. And I walked out of the room. <laughs> that was like, Even uh, when he first started, nobody gives a fuck about this guy. He's a loser. Like Tony Atlas, I went to my room. I would, exactly. <laughs> so the right. thing about him is like when he was in the Million Dollar Tough Enough and all he, that everybody talked about is that he broke his sweat eating. He's eating Rice Krispie treats the whole nine. And then he comes in as friggin' Skip Sheffield. <laughs> Skip Sheffield, yep, yep, what it do. And NXT with William Reed as his mentor. Then he's friggin' in the next in the Nexus. Then he's right back. And then yeah, like I don't give a fuck. No, he... and, and and nobody wants to bring up during that time if he was all those little random gimmicks. He was half the size of what he is now. Yeah, that's correct. He uh, he went off at somebody on Twitter as well about how the crowd used to roar, feed me more, and he like he like it was made him the biggest thing in wrestling. I was like yeah, the chant was over and you were over for a couple of months. Then you were exposed. Oh, what was him going at Dolph Ziggler, too? He was going at Dolph Ziggler. I think that was it. Yeah, he went at Dolph Ziggler with it. What, did they used to chant for him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Feed Dude, me people more got used over. to chant for him because there was there was that gigantic divide in, in WWE fans. You had those fans that absolutely loved Punk and everything, and then the other fans absolutely hated Punk. And the second you put him in a feud with Punk, guess what? Half of them were going to scream, feed me more. Yeah. And the chant was much more over than he was. Oh, exactly. Just like how fucking Breezango's song was far, uh, more over than he was. <laughs> or Fandango, I mean. Yeah. yeah he wrote, I, I never heard those chants about Feed Me More. Was too busy listening to the building roar and shake with my trademark Feed Me More. What's next for Ziggy Michaels? Sitting in Gorilla working under Pussy Paul's developmental program? Wasn't he world champ and you weren't, Bub? Yep. yep. Okay then. Like the last time I checked, oh boy, in the world of professional wrestling, that that check mark that trumps it all. World championship run? Yes, sir. You don't talk to me. You were the intercontinental champion and you read the secret. Shut the fuck up, Ryan. <laughs> there you go. And on that, it is time for us to tap out and bid you adieu. So before we go, remember to like and follow Max Wrestling on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us at Max Wrestling UK on Twitter and Instagram. We're also on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. Yes, bizarre! And now on Anchor.fm. And if that wasn't enough, you can always find us on Wrestling with Wrestling. and very, very thanks, very thanks, very, very thanks. Big thanks to Fucking Andre and Corbeil as well. Uh, you can find me at the Captain Five One Two. You can find Travis at Walker underscore T A ninety two and Twitch. Don't make your dick itch. So don't be a wanker and join us on Anchor along with Moses Marquez. Damn right, Anchor stuff is uh, is is popping like crazy. Um, again. Uh, it, we're on a wrestling show. Stop. At, if you're asking about Bolt Rant, then you're a football fan. Just know that it's about football. You can skip it. More retro stuff's coming. Don't worry about it. Oh, my God. What's this guy doing? Shut up. Okay. Got the goddamn team tattooed on my arm. I will bitch and complain about them till I'm blue in the face because I have the equipment to do so. But back to the retro uh, spectrum. 
That's finally back on track. Um, apparently, I've been plugging the crap out of Mind Games. That's not the next pay per view on my our list. <laughs> it's actually uh, Fall Brawl War Games. So because I've been plugging the shit out of one and then the other, Monday is going to be a double pay per view retro. So it's not going to be like a regular, you know, Raw and Nitro. No, it's going to be two pay per views. So we're going to do. I'm going to be doing both Mind Games, and I'm going to be doing Fall Brawl. Fall Brawl goes first. Followed up with mind games, and then that following week, we're just going to keep on down the line with however it goes. So stay tuned for that, and uh, and God only knows what more. Oh, and by the way, Fatal 4-Way next week, if that already hasn't been, you know, stuffed into your brains. Hell yeah. Because, you know, we need everybody needs to prepare for, for the, the, the new, the new, if you will. I'm going to have to hire Chimmel since he's got fired. <laughs> You know, because so that's just, the, just out of curiosity, though. So, which match are you most looking forward to? Because you got three matches next. I week. do have three matches. Okay, so, um, because I'm okay. That's a great question. So, the one I'm most looking forward to, like I cannot wait for it to happen, is honestly me in the shape. I've been like, this is one of these ones where it's like. You get it's like say we're like in the '80s, and I got told like, "Hey, you want to work with Harley Race? Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> like, I'm all about it. So it's like that one I'm really looking forward to. Um, I'm gonna say like I'm not nervous for the four way. I feel super confident, but for some reason I have like this weird uh, pit in my stomach when it comes to the knowledge title. But. uh I don't know. We'll we'll see what's going on. Like I said, uh, Phoenix has got a lot of he's got a tough road until he gets to me. So hopefully hey, he'll be nice yeah. and beaten down until I get to him. Just my my best advice to you is just think positive that after next week you could walk out King Mo triple bell. Triple. That's right. Well, I don't know about the, the prediction part, but I'll take the other two. <laughs> <laughs> About to say, so we're talking impact when it comes to predictions, but um, that, that's my goal. Like I've been telling Mike for forever, that's my goal. I'm going to try to take both of them now. I'm going to do the absolute best I can to hold on to them all the way up until it's me against him. That way, it's the ultimate end all be all. It's, it's more of um, me. This is like this is the start of my G1 run. Now I'm going to be a double champ, and then I'm going to fucking main event the Tokyo Dome. That's how it's going to be. Except I'm not going to be Gato and make a weird kind of fucking, you know, give the briefcase <laughs> to that guy just so this guy can defend on two nights. And, yeah, that's not how it's going to go. Yeah, well, we already know it's going to be the Battle of the Kings. There you go. Oh, man. You, I, I, I know there's, like, no way in hell Larkin would ever want to do it. But just just imagine if you won, like, the Survivor Series predictions, right? Then you win the knowledge title, and then you win the promo title, and then somehow you convince Larkin to put the Iron Bank title on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just win. You just have literally it all, the king of the mic and all the titles and the briefcase that you can cash in on yourself. <laughs> yeah, either, that, either that or Mike could just go full heel and just cash in right before promo mania. Oh, Knowing God. him, probably. <laughs> Well, he's going to have to cash in either at Romania or before anyway. Yeah, because that's when it go. runs out, but we'll see. Uh, and speaking of Mike, there's a reason we call him the podcast machine. Mike, who's been on the mic with you? Well, unlike dumbass over there, I actually know who I've been talking to and what I'm covering with this paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, you guys can check out the LMC podcast. Hilarious. You're welcome. The LMC podcast featuring Ariel X of Evolved Fights. <laughs> You guys can check out my latest interview with Sassy Steffi, who also has her own podcast out called Talkin' Sass, which she just interviewed Izzy, Izzy Mania. Yes, I'm talking about Izzy, Bailey fan numero uno. And we also talked about her bouts with Brittany Savage for the WSU Spirit Championship, working with the likes of Nevea, LaFisto. The list goes on and on. It was an awesome interview. You guys can check me out, soundcloud.com, slash MCLarkin92. 
Anchor doing the damn thing with LFC. We're almost up to a thousand plays, which I thank you, man. On the grind, on the Anchor. We're all on Anchor in the Anchor community. Woo! And you can check it out on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes, wherever you get your audio platforms for LFC, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, three key elements that make women the work of art that they are, bro. And wrestling at wrestling.com. Oh, yeah, Moses, I just channeled you. Wherever you get me, stevenmikeshow.com. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. I'm the here and now, baby. Yeah. And join us for possibly <laughs> how long until that gets old? Never. Uh, Never. Join us next week for <laughs> possibly our best episode of the year. We're going to do our absolute best to make it so. Promo series five, and don't forget the pre-launch show on Tuesday, the show before the show. And if you need a further preview, post to post is available right now, where we are also joined by the Demon Esther to uh, look back on the promo bowl. And talk some promo shop with some of the runners up. And that, my friends, is the bottom line. Goodbye. Mwah. We'll see you next week. Next week. Right. And good yep. night. Bang. Mo That's Trey right. Four way ain't no goddamn open mic, bitches. Mo Trey belts. Mo Trey belts. Mo Trey belts. <laughs>